Okay. Um. After after the break, let's uh, let's continue with a very simple explanation of the variable types of Python. So variables are nothing but reserved memory locations of stored values. So in the computer's memory, you have a reserved location to to store the values. Once you so this is in the memory, not not in the hard disk. Okay. So memory is a temporary um, the store of the um, inventory of the values. While hard, in the hard disk, you have the permanent uh, inventory of the values or the files. So once you turn off the the computer, uh, the memory will 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 go away. And um, if you have not saved the codes, you have to restart and uh, and uh, redo everything. So I advise you to save your file uh, frequently, like after you write like two or three lines. Uh, use the control plus s um, um, frequently. So in Python, we have uh, different types of variables. Uh, I introduced uh, the 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 boolean value variable that that takes a value of true or false. Okay, true also has a value of one, and uh, false has value of uh, zero. It also has a uh, other variable types for example integer integer meaning is integer is meaning the 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 numbers without decimals for example one two three four five that those are integers but one point zero or one thousand point zero it's it's not an integer variable it's a floating point variable okay it's another variable type we will talk about the, the, the difference. Or if you have taken the computer science, you understand the difference of this because this is a this is a very different, um, not very different, but this is a different store of the the in the of the value in the memory space. Okay, they use different algorithms to to save the to save them in the memory space. Uh, variables included within the double quotation or single quotation or triple quotation. Um, are called strings. Okay, for example, names, name. Also, we say name equals John. We say John is string, but actually, um, this is not an equal sign. This is a value assignment sign. We assign the string value to this variable. So this variable name now takes the value of John. Well, in the previous version version of R, now uh, right now R language also supports that you use a uh, use uh, um, arrow. So you have a, a arrow here. Let, let me let me write it. So name. I I always say echoes, but it doesn't mean uh, echo in numerical sense. Okay. So in other Languages, it can be right like something like this. Okay. okay. Well, in Python, it doesn't support this grammar, but in some other languages such as R, it. I I think this is more um, intuitive, but you know, it's uh, we, we do not use it because in Python because it's really tedious. Uh, for equal sign, you can just uh, you know type this uh, equal sign equal button once. But for this, you have to type type it twice. So we just use this. Okay. But I think this symbol um, more accurately describe the process. This is not the name equals John. It's that we assign the value of John as a string to the variable of name. Okay. okay. Then we can print. Uh, the different variables. Okay. You can also assign a single value or to to several variables simultaneously. For example, you can assign uh, one equals b equals three equals one. Well, well, sometimes you see that when I when I type the Echoes or other symbols, I have a blank before and after this operator, and sometimes you see that I do not do this. Okay, I advise you 
to always leave the space before and after this. Um, I didn't do this. I didn't do it all the time because I was lazy and I did not have a perfectly uh, good um, coding habit. So A, well, B, and C. And also you can see, you can write A, B, C equals 1, 2, John. Actually, this is a tuple. Uh, whenever we do this, it's kind of like a tuple. And we assign each value of a tuple in a tuple to the accordingly according position, corresponding position of the variable. Um, for example, A, B, C equals 4, 5, sorry. Six. The A is four, C is six, B is five. That one told us that the assignment of the value does not have to make all values numerical. You can, for example, use, and this is a Boolean uh, value. This is true. So C is two, and B is again, and A is four. Okay. We can also do this with a tuple. Okay. It is. It, it was a tuple. So B is this. C is this. A is this. Um, that was the end of um, the very, very brief um, introduction of the variable types. So let's talk about the, the different distributions. So what is a Python distribution? If you open this web page, you find out that uh, a dist if, you, if you just install a very raw version of Python, it's going to be just a Python. And for a lot of functions, you have to write every function by yourself. But actually, Python is open source software. That is, a lot of others have written millions of different functions. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel again. You don't have to write the same function and waste your time on that. So you can just directly, directly use the other functions that other people have written for you. Not, not, not really for you, but for, for themselves. But you can just borrow and use them. So some people just put all of the function, useful functions that the whole Python community have agreed that they have a consensus that these functions are very useful and they are well written. In good algorithm, they are fast, accurate, and good. So they just put all of these functions together with a raw Python and make the whole package of it and for you to download. So that is called a distribution. Uh, Python has numerous distributions. Following this link, you can just open this link and take a look. Uh, it also have different versions. So Python has 2.0, you know, 1.0, 2.0, 5.0, uh, 3.0. Now we, we advise you to use a 3.7, okay, 3.7 or 3.6. There, almost the same. Um, when I was learning, no, when I, when I, I, I thought, I think I used a two point, two point something. And I, the, um, I used a 2.7 version for the longest time, several years. Um, until teaching this course, I, uh, update, I, I updated my, all of my codes to 3.3. Um, in this master, I updated uh, some of them to 3.7, but I think like most of them should be the same as before. Okay, so Anaconda is a very good distribution. So uh, it has a lot of different packages. You open this link, you can see all of the packages it has. For example, you do not have to you uh, reinstall uh, PIP install again. Um, the PIP can help you install a lot of other uh, packages that you don't have very easily. 
um, well, even ancient times, like 15 years ago, we have to, I had to download and install a lot of uh, packages by myself. Some of them like are not compatible with others and I spent, I could spend like 10 hours, 12 hours installing a very simple package that you can easily get to online today. So this is a, this is a good progress of the society and that, that, that can save your save a lot of your time. So just click the on the calendar and the download uh, the 3.6 or 7 you download this uh, and install it. So it automatic, automatically goes with um, um, the IDE okay the spider ID. I, I find spider is pretty good. I used to use Sublime and um, Jupyter, um, but now I think, well, the, the, the IPython console is kind of like the Jupyter. It's interactive, but uh, you can also have this uh, uh, editor to write everything in and save them easily. To install, after you download an account, you can just, um, uh, if you use Windows, you can um, uh, type the start and the account prompt. Then um, you can you can use the account install spider to, to install the spider. But but usually, like, you, you know, everyone has a different OS uh, operating system. So some of your installation of that account has already got the spider um installed uh, IDE installed but uh, some if you encounter any problems feel free to email the TA okay uh, and TA will be available to answer your questions for the installation uh, because this is not a face-to-face -face teaching if uh, you really in the in the normal class we spend a lot of time the debugging and um, and I guide you to 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 help you help you resolve a lot of problems because of the pandemic, I, I, I have to be here like in the, over the video, I cannot expect a lot of pro problems that you probably will encounter. So do not forget to, uh, feel free to contact the TA. And if TA has any problems, uh, TA will contact me and uh, we will help you to resolve the problems. Okay. And uh, what is IDE? Uh, why spider? Uh, IDE, is an interactive um, software for you to easily write the program. See, um, if you write a program such as this, so if you write uh, install the raw Python, you probably have to do this, this, Python. Okay, now this is a Python. Five plus three, eight. And uh, print, hello world. Hello world. For i equals no i in range ten. Though this is a loop. I print hello. It's gonna go. Oh, I I uh, you see I got a problem. I should do this. one two three four. Even this is not being automatically corrected by the uh, original Python. I should do one, two, three, four, and uh, no, print. Uh, hello. So uh, ten hellos have been printed. By the way, um, a, a very funny thing about Python is that in the for loop, Python is. If you print I, what do you expect? It prints from zero. So the f every time you define your for loop, it always starts from zero. Okay. If you don't understand this, uh, it's fine. Um, uh, you're gonna get familiar with this later. So you see, with the very original version of Python, I have to spend a lot of um, time and effort dealing with a lot of tedious things. For example, um, typing four blanks uh, spaces. It's it's very uh, it's very tedious. 
So uh, in uh, IDE, it automatically correct it and uh, facilitate my coding. For example, if I do if uh, for i in range 10, you see, when I type the first parenthesis, the second parenthesis is automatically being displayed for me. And I can type 10, then subcolumn, and semicolon, and then no, the, the column, then um, then the four spaces, one, two, three, four, has been provided for me. And I can do print I. Okay. If I ran this, I ran this. Uh -oh. I need to save this first. Uh, let me save it somewhere. See, I ran this .py file. This is a .py file, and uh, you will find that it it uh, the eyes are printed. Okay. Why spider? Because spider is um, is very light. Um, them very very good coders. They use Vim or Emacs. I don't use them. Um, if you're from uh, computer science department, uh, you probably will find a lot of professors using them. Uh, again, we are in business school, so the the remember our purpose of this of this course. Uh, this this course is not for the coders. This course is for the data analysts okay you we, we learn the basic use of the programming just for the database to, uh, analysis we are not uh, developing a software or something we just want to use uh, this uh, language to process the data and analyze analyze the potential relationship between different variables to enter to understand better the, the economics and finance okay that's the purpose of the course so we do not uh, Again, let me emphasize it again. Uh, we do not go too beyond um, from the technical side. The the we we emphasize the real use of this of this language. Uh, some people in the past they fail to find out the. To, to find uh, a spider within their anaconda. I have no idea why that happened. So you can download the spider directly from this link. And uh, this is uh, this is a typical window or or um, the, 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 uh, the 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 interface for you to use spider. And this is this part is called the editor where you can write the code and save it. So if you do not save it, you will have a star here to indicate that you haven't saved it. If you haven't saved the code, you cannot run it. Okay. If you want to execute the whole code, you have to save the code somewhere. Uh, and it's going to be a .py file. And this, this part is where you can check the files. Okay. This is a file explorer. It, you can also find out all of the variables that you have defined. Sometimes you do not remember all of the variables that you have defined. For example, let me see. See, these are the variables that I have defined. So any variable, any underscore variable, A, B, C, I, name, path, if you... Oh, path is something that I defined before that I haven't showed you in, the, in, the, in this teaching video. And this is console. Console is where you can execute, execute code and the command line, uh, line by line. And this is kind of like a Jupyter. You see that this code uh, is... Uh, is, uh, has it has a lot of notifications saying the warning saying that uh, uh, the code cannot be cannot be executed because the it shows you the error. This is also a, a, a advantage of the IDE. It shows you uh, it reminds you of what's going wrong with your with your code. Okay, it says like I haven't I forgot to in, import the module name the parser. Okay, so this part button allows you to run the .py file. And this button allows you to open the existing .py file. And um, this button, this one, allows you to create a new blank .py file for you to write uh, new codes. Okay. Mm. 
Hello world. Um, this is something that every program beginner must do. It's kind of like a religion. Okay, you have to do this. Uh, you have to write a code to print Hello World. Okay. Hello World is a string here. I use single quotation. You can also use the double quotation. Um, we have different um, we have different uh, variable types: uh, boolean, number, float, or integer. Um, the the good thing is that in Python, Python is a dynamic language. A, a difference between a dynamic and static language is that in the static language you have to or you always have to define the the data type of the variable. For example, if you want to define a variable called uh, integer, uh, 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 which is integer, you should say integer i. Then i equals five. If you assign i equals five point zero. You probably, well, in some programming languages, it's going to be the integer data type will automatically be converted into a floating point type. But uh, in some other languages, it's gonna, you, will, you will encounter a warning and error. Um, if you want to, if you, in a standard language, you define integer i and you define i as a string hello world, then you will find a problem, then the, the uh, error, uh, a mistake. That uh, arrow then uh, and the warning to 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 indicate that you have you have you have made a mistake. But in Python, as a uh, a dynamic language, you can say i equals five. Now automatically, i will be um, i will be uh, understood by Python as an integer. If say i well i equals five. I do not have to define i as five. I just say i as five. You see, the type will be integer. If I just change i equals, I say i equals John. Now automatically, you see that the type of uh, the variable i will be string, str as string, as string. Okay, as a, as a string. So let's do it. Print. Everyone, everyone, follow me. And you can pause the video and say, hello world. Now you have finished this, uh, this must do in, the, in, in this course. And we have a lot of different operators. We have talked about that a little bit. These are the operators, plus, minus, multiply, slash, divide, uh, the percentage, uh, but remember that plus is not really plus. It's uh, if if the plus sign is to operator is connecting to numerical values, then it is a plus, and it calculates the sum of the two values. But it's connecting the two strings, then it connects the strings together, and uh, generates the output the 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 uh, a single outcome string. So here, i plus a space plus j is going to be high high j, and um, <coughs> this is a division divide, and this uh, the greater than or equal to uh, no greater than or smaller or uh, less less than will give you a operate uh, a boolean value true or false. An integer is divide when the integer is divided by a float then the integer will be automatically converted into a floating uh, data type, floating point data type, and the outcome will be a floating number. Uh, this could be wrong because this is, uh, I'm sorry, this is, uh, this is in Python 2. I think in Python 3, um, when two integers are, uh, when one integer is dividing another integer, then, um, then the outcome should be converted into a floating number. Let me check. Exactly. If you use, or why do you have the five here rather than three? Uh, this is uh, some rounding problem of uh, of uh, 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 of Python, but you really it does not uh, affect our calculation. Let's do this. Yeah. 
So this will be generate the same answer. So please, I uh, forgive me. I forgot to uh, to 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 up, 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 update this. So in Python two, um, when two integers, when one integer is dividing another integer, then the outcome will still be integer. But in uh, but this is stupid. So in um, in um, <coughs> Python three, it's uh, it's updated to uh, a floating point type. The outcome. Um, so this is to get the 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 number that cannot be divided. For example, ten divide by three, and three times three equals nine. So ten minus nine equals one. Okay, so it produces one. Why is this useful? It's going to be very useful in the for loop, and uh, a lot of other uses, and you will learn it later. Okay, we also have the less than or equal or equal to a greater than or equal to and the equality test. Remember that the double, uh, the one equal sign does not mean equal. It means we assign, so for example, name equals John, meaning that we assign the value John, the string value John, to name. But equality test, the double equal sign means the equality test. It generates a Boolean value. For example, Five equal equal to five, you will get a two, and five equal equal to seven, you will get a four. So you probably think like, what? Stupid. No. For example, if you get, uh, you want to know. Um, the outcome of this mu multiplication is uh, 345 uh, divided by 6. You want to know whether it equals to 1. I don't know. You know it's false. It's 2. False. What is this? It's 3.0. You can try and see whether it's 3. It's true. Okay. Um, in some algorithms, it, it can be useful. You sometimes you will have the uh, operator overloading. Um, for example, you can also use the for example, this is a multiplication multiplying uh, sign the operator, and this operator, if you use uh, three times three, it's gonna it's it's gonna giving you it's gonna give you uh, nine. If you use if you use a string, John times five, you will have John, 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 John. And if you add a space after John, you will have a space after it. Okay? So it doesn't really mean multiply. It can be, uh, the multiply sign is multiply. The operator means multiply when it connects to numerical values. The modular operator also works differently with strings. Okay, for example, this is to indicate to to fill in the blank with. So this is something very very um, important in Python that I forgot to uh, to tell you earlier. So you can write. I want to have. Five apples. Okay, but I don't know how many apples I want to have. I can write f, and I input my number after this string, and five will be automatically inserted into the f. It's gonna be well. It's a floating, uh, it's a floating point type. So you 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 find out that uh, it print out. Uh, I want to have five point zero apples. Why is this useful? Well, it's very useful in data scripting because not only you wanna say. I think S means string is my good friend. 
Andy can put John. I think John is my good friend. And why you can why you want to do this? Because you can do for name and a list of John, Alice. Let's go. Print. Name. Then it's gonna insert everyone in this list. I will. It, the the form is that the name will take um, the the different values in this list one by one, and the different value of name will be inserted into this sentence one by one. See what it generates. It will it will print out three sentences. I think John is my good friend. I think Alice is my good friend. And Zigan is my good friend. If we do not write it in such a way, we have to probably write it like this. Print, I think, plus name, plus, remember that plus sign is connecting the two strings together. Like this. Okay. You probably find like in this one, it's not very uh, different, but in some other projects, you will find this first way of writing the code is much more efficient. So you can also use a function called type. This is a function called type to indicate the function of type, uh, the, the the type of the function, uh, type of a variable. Uh, for example, if you type um, Type i. It's going to give you a string because i. I have a defined i as a string. If you have uh, two, it's going to be a bool boolean. But hey, what if I do this? Now this two, because it's included within a single quotation or double quotation, whatever. Mm -mm. And the type will be a string. Okay. Uh, we have talked about it. Um, integer plus float or float plus integer will produce your float. Uh, this one is uh, should be updated. This is just for uh, Python two. I'm sorry that I haven't updated this. Uh, we have covered this, the, the numbers, uh, integer floats, boolean and strings. Type conversion. You can also use different functions to convert the type by yourself. For example, you can convert the 3.3 to a string 3.3. You probably think like, why do I, why do I do it? Yes, you have to do it sometimes because if you want to type I have plus three plus apples. You will find an error because Python is confused that you connect a string with a numerical value with a string. What do you really want? Python says, hey, I can only connect the string with a string with a string. So to modify this code to make it work, you should use str string string, and and you will have I have three apples. Okay. Okay. You can convert this uh, numerical value into a string or a string with which it's. Is it recording? Is it recording? I'm not sure whether it's recording. I think it's recording, but I have no idea why my screen is uh, is uh, is 
Oh, it doesn't move. Um, what's going on? I have no idea. Uh, oh, we have covered uh, 40 to 46 pages. How many pages do I have? I have uh, four more pages. Okay, let me continue. I have no idea why the why my my uh, this is uh, okay. Um, um, if if your string, if the if the value within the string is a number, is uh, either either integer or float, uh, you can use integer or float to convert this string into an integer or float. But if you want to convert a well, I think this is not updated. Yes. So in Python 2, you could not do this. I'm sorry. I should have updated this. So if you can convert 7.1 into an integer, you will drop the, 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 the decimal part. So what about the uh, 7.9? Remember that this is not rounding. Okay, this is not rounding. Even this 7.9 and you want to convert 7.9 into an integer, it doesn't give you an 8. It was simply, the integer function simply drops everything after the decimal. Um, and you cannot convert a string that is not a part, uh, that, that does not include the, 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 the numerical value into the float. Or integer. Okay, cannot do this. Um, yeah, we talked about it. The difference between single equal sign and the double equal sign. Uh, variable names can be made up of uh, letters, numbers, and underscores. But remember, you cannot cannot start with numbers, okay? Uh, variable names should start with a letter. When a variable is evaluated, it produces uh, uh, the value of the data that it points to. For example, um, if you design my variable equals five, you assign five to this my, my variable, and then you type my variable plus five, it will give you a 15. You can try it by yourself. So you must assign something to a variable to create the variable name before you try to use it. But what about you say, hey, I don't want to create anything. For example, I want to create a list, but I don't know what kind of variables I, oh, what kind of values I want to assign to this list. So what do you do? List is a is also a as a type of object in Python. My list it goes. So you say, well, you define one to three. My list. See the data type. The the object type is list. Okay, it's one two three. And you say, I I I just your list. I don't want to do. I don't want to. I don't know what values I want to. I I can have. What do you do? You can basically define an empty list. Okay. Empty list. So your list will be also a list and the size is zero. So the size is three, meaning that this list has three has three uh, values. So your list. I I think I should turn off the Siri. <clears throat> Uh, if you want to find the area of a circle given, given the radius, uh, you can define the radius, uh, you can define the value pi, and uh, well, uh, if you install a package, you will not have to define pi. If you, uh, if you have a NumPy package, we will talk about it later, maybe in two weeks. Uh, the, and you want to calculate the, the area of the circle, you can write area equals pi times radius times radius and print out this. And uh, you can practice the example by yourself.
Okay, now we have finished the simple introduction of an account, uh, the IDE, and the, the variables, um, and data types, and uh, the print function. In the next video, we will talk about the, the open and writes of the, the open and writes of the files.